What's good, guys? I have some breaking news in regards to the Michaela Miller case. Um, this is how things are going to go down tomorrow. Monica Cannon Grant just posted this on Facebook. Media advisory for Wednesday, May the 19th, 2021, 1 o'clock p.m. In Eastern Time. Wednesday at 1 p.m., civil rights attorney Ben Crump joins community leaders, family members, and black LGBTQ advocates in press conference on the suspicious death of Michaela Miller. Michaela's mother, former Boston City Council Tito Jackson, National Black Justice Coalition, Violence in Boston, Inc., and civil rights attorney Ben Crump demand comprehensive investigation into the killing of Michaela Miller. On Wednesday, May the 19th at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, civil rights attorney Ben Crump will join community leaders, Michaela's mother, Calvina Struthers, and advocates from the National Black Justice Coalition in a virtual press conference raising concerns and questions around the suspicious death of Michaela Miller. On the press conference, they will outline the concerning details surrounding Michaela's death and call for a comprehensive investigation into her potential murder. The press conference comes after the state medical examiner ruled late Tuesday that Michaela Miller died by suicide. When? Tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Speakers include Ben Crump, civil rights attorney, Calvina Struthers, Michaela Miller's mother, David Johns, executive director of the National Black Justice Coalition, Tito Jackson, former member of the Boston City Council, and Monica Cannon Grant, CEO and founder of Violence in Boston, Inc. To RSVP, please email Brett Abrams at Brett at unbendablemedia.com. Michaela Miller, a 16-year-old black girl and member of the LGBTQ same gender loving community, was found dead on April the 18th in Hopkinton, Massachusetts, one day after her mother, Calvina Struthers, said she was assaulted by a group of five white teenagers. Michaela Miller was a gifted student and talented athlete who dreamed of attending a historically black college or university and becoming a journalist. She has been described as beautiful, passionate, and a loving daughter, sister, cousin, niece, and friend. But according to the National Black Justice Coalition and others involved in the case, there are a few key factors around Michaela's death that just don't add up. Specifically, they raise concerns that there is no way that Michaela could have killed herself. She was found standing upright with a belt tied around her neck, which was tied to a tree that was neither tall nor sturdy enough to withstand her body weight. The belt did not belong to either Michaela or her mother. Michaela was assaulted by five white teenagers the night before her mysterious death. According to those familiar with the incident, Michaela met up with her ex-girlfriend who was set to return her personal belongings to her at her apartment complex's clubhouse. When they met up, her ex-girlfriend was joined by four white teenagers, two boys over the age of 18, who drove in from a nearby town. After telling her mother, Struthers reported the incident to police. Michaela then left her home to go to the clubhouse around 9.30 p.m. Eastern. This was the last time she was seen alive. The video cameras usually operating in the clubhouse were mysteriously not working on April the 17th or the 18th. According to Calvina Struthers, the police originally showed little interest in investigating Michaela's death and threatened Struthers with exposing her daughter's sexuality publicly if she reported the matter to the media. Calvina Struthers emphasized that a case involving a white child in Michaela's position would have received immediate attention. In May, Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan held a press conference stating that Michaela Miller's cause of death had not been determined and that the investigation into both Miller's death and her assault the day before is ongoing. Ryan denied the case was neglected because of Miller's race or sexuality. The National Black Justice Coalition, or MBJC, is America's leading civil rights organization dedicated to the empowerment of black, lesbian, gay, bisexual, 
transgender, queer, and same gender loving people, including people living with HIV. So she just posted that. And so now I see why she was smiling from ear to ear as I am right now. I am super excited to see the way this case is going to proceed. I believe we're going to get the answers. I believe her family is going to get justice. So I just wanted to bring this to the channel. Um, and I will cover that event tomorrow. Um, super excited about it. So that's all I have, guys. Thanks for watching.